YouTube team of kids, it's your girl Donna the B, and I'm back with another video. So today I'm going to be doing the video about marriage and relationships. Um, I did go before the Lord with this message, and so I have a few scriptures I'm going to read with you guys. I have a couple of things. I have my computer. I have my Bible, and so we're going to go back and forth just for the sake of time. I like to read from my Bible, but to look up things really quickly, I am going to use my computer as well. I hope that this message is fruit to your spirit, and I hope that it helps whoever it is for. So to begin the message, we are going to talk about the principles of love, and I know that you guys have probably heard this scripture before. If my sound goes out, it's because I'm in a hollow room, so I won't know until the video is over, until I watch it. But we're going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. And we are focusing on the principles of how to love, okay? So, it says, love is patient. Patience. <laughs> love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. And so this scripture is very, very important to me because a lot of times in relationships, you get a lot of different dynamics and sometimes you get competitive spirits. You get, you know, people thinking like, oh, I got to show that I'm doing more or, you know, it, it's, it's more of a ego, ego thing. And so um, it's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. So remember that one because we are actually going to go over another scripture that talks about keeping no record of wrongs. Okay, and so we are next going to move to I'm going to say because I got them numbered. I guess we're going to go to Matthew's 19. Okay, no. I have something on my heart because not fighting flesh but so I wanted to go with this scripture about um, okay Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 it says for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness okay and I want to go over that because a lot of times we think well he's doing this to me and she's doing this to me but if you're married if you're a union I want you guys to pray for each other more than you go at each other because we are not battling with flesh and blood we are battling a spiritual battle and sometimes the enemy can use the closest person to you to try to destroy you and so if you're already in a union you want to pray against the spirits that are you know that's causing so much commotion between you so yeah that was Ephesians 6 and 12. also we're going to go over Matthew 19 which um verses 4 through 6 Matthew 19 verses 4 through 6 and it says and he answered and said to them have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and join to his wife and the two shall become flesh and so that one was really important to me because a lot of times in this new modern world you hear the man saying oh I gotta get myself together and this and that and then years later he never gets himself you know it's like you never really fully get yourself together until you're growing with the other half of yourself, right? So, as we all know, God made female from man. He actually put Adam to sleep and did a miraculous thing and made she. So, um, it's, it's kind of like the iron sharp or iron thing. You, you become your best self when you have that other half, right? And so, we're going to continue to talk about that because you got to think about it. Your best partner... Your best business partner, you think it's going to be your homeboy or something like that. But God said, a man leaves his father and mother and joins together with his wife. Okay, and so a lot of times she's often your biggest investor. The guys ain't going to give you that much money out of their pocket. She's like your investor. She's like 
you know, bookkeepers, she's like, um, you know, the person that you go to for opinions and things like that. So like that is your other half, that is your helpmate. So we are going to go to, um, let's see, because I got some good ones. Let's talk to the man for a second. So in Colossians chapter 3, verses 19, God said, Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Okay? Never treat them harshly because it's this stigma about being in control and being a leader, which uh, we are supposed to respect and trust their leadership. But at the same time, um, it's not about being harsh or like dismissing her ideas or dismissing her feelings or controlling her. That's not what a leader is about. So um, a leader is just about like spiritually leading his family, you know, in the right direction, not being that destruction, uh, not destroying them, like gambling and like breaking up the home because of infidelities or like whatever, you know? So that's what a leader is really about. It's about being um, mentally where he should be. You know, but he should be a man after God's own heart. That way God can lead him to where he should be. Okay, and then so we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21. And further, submit to one another of um, out of reverence for the Lord. So submit to one another. Yes, the women are supposed to, um, you know, so it says, I'm going to keep reading. Why? Submit to your husbands. Husbands and, uh, hold on, one second. Wives, submit to your husbands. And then verse 28 says, Husbands, out of the love for... Husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. Because when you are joined together, you are one. And so the way that you treat her is a reflection of how you love yourself. Because if you ever heard of it, when somebody actually does something to dishonor his wife in public, people are not praising you honestly. They're somewhere talking about you like like how weak you are and like how you're disrespecting your home and everything like that. So make sure that you remember that because a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. Okay, we're going to talk about the women for a minute because a lot of times women come from this place of always trying to defend themselves, right? We have for so long our um, our feelings or our, our opinions or ideas have not been respected. So we always come from this place of trying to defend ourselves. And so when you hear submit to your husband, it's like, I'm not going to let nobody control me. I'm not going like, I want to be independent. Like, so it's not about laying down your ideas or laying down your ambitions or anything. It's about being in a soft space with this person that you are supposed to respect his leadership and you have to make sure that you're not just choosing somebody because of history or because of lust or because of looks or anything like that. You have to really look at the intent for your life. You have to look at uh, what his interests are. You have to really choose the right type of person to first be able to trust and respect his leadership. But when it comes to submitting, it's about being in a soft place with this man because you are his his comfort zone. You're his um. You know when you come, a lot of times women we listen from a place of just responding or defending ourselves, but we are supposed to listen from a place of understanding and processing information so that we can make that decision that is of love. Everything that we are uh, supposed to do is supposed to be out of love. We are supposed to communicate out of love. Um, we are supposed to just be the ones who keep the peace and the safe space in the family, not always just trying to be combative and trying to uh, get our point across. Like, just because you're coming from a quiet place does not mean that you're weak. It just means that you're thinking. And you can be still when it's time to be still. And maybe later you'll revisit that conversation if it's something that's really bothering you. Or if it's something that you feel that is affecting your family that you should talk about. Just know as the woman, as coming from your safe, uh, your quiet space, when is a good time to talk about that? Because all the time when your husbands are in an uproar or they're having a tough day or they haven't thought everything through, maybe that's not the right time to talk about certain things. So, um... That 
takes us to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 22. But that's a long verse, so I'm going to read the most important one to me. And, it's, and it says, let your adornment be the hidden person of the heart and not the imperishable, uh, imperishable beauty. Okay? So, uh, be gentle and have a quiet spirit. So, that's what it says. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, and you can read verse 1, 22. It's very long, but that's a very good scripture for us to follow. Um, and it's not about your looks or anything like that, but it's about your heart. It's about your inner soul, the type of woman that you are on the inside. Okay? So, um, Proverbs 19 and 14, a prudent wife is from the Lord. Um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Keep loving each other since love covers a multitude of sins. So through it all, you want to always remain in a place where, regardless of what's going on in this house, I love you anyway. Okay? And then so that's where we're going to go to Romans chapter 12, 17 through 21. That's uh, what I was talking about, not keeping a record of doing wrong. So this, Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 21, it's about overcoming evil with good, okay? It's um, it's about God being your intervention. If you go to that, um, you'll, you'll read about how God is saying, like, don't take vengeance for yourself. Instead, continue to do well. So, like, you know, if you know your husband having a hard time or whatever, as a woman, I feel like you should still be cooking. You should still be washing clothes. You should still be, you know, you're not going to lay on the couch. You're still, you know, making it to bed every day. Like, just continue to be the same person that you will be any other time. Because you're not fighting with flesh and blood, you're fighting with spirit. So be the one that's praying for him more than you're being combative with him, okay? So, um, and it says that God will God will go before, before you and take care of everything that you are having a hard time with. And that is Romans chapter 12, verse 17 through 21. That one was really powerful for me because if you pray and you send God to handle your battles for you, but you continue to be in love and you continue to take your home the way that you would, God is going to, he's going to relieve your soul. He's going to go to your husband and he's going to answer your prayers. He's going to work in him because God is um, blessing your union and he is pleased with how you are handling the situation. So, um, yes. Do not let any Oh, man, I got so many. I wish I could be here all day, but my phone won't let me go that long. So we're going to go with Proverbs 31 because Proverbs 31 is not only for the women, as people always say. It's also for a guy. Proverbs 31 says, um, the sayings of King Lemuel contain this message, which his mother taught him. Oh, my son, oh, son of my womb, oh, son of my vows, do not waste your strength on women on those who ruin kings. Okay, we know what kind of women those are. It is not for kings to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol, for if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice to the oppressed. So that is telling guys what women do not choose. But I'm going to keep going. Um, I want to I wanna read this one. Okay, so Proverbs... 31 and verse 12, it says, um, okay, we're going to go from verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Listen to this. Her husband can trust her, and she will gently enrich his life. She will gently enrich his life. So if she's not enriching your life, if you can't feel like a higher level of essence with her in your life, maybe you should reconsider, okay? She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. So that is Proverbs 31, chapter 12. And so I think I'm going to do another study on this because I have so many more scriptures and I'm resting because I know my phone is going to cut off soon. So I love you guys. I want you guys to take this word back to God. And make sure that you are looking up these scriptures and reading them so that they can, um, you can, you know, it can be in your spirit. You can, like, see what it means to you. 
And we all know that um, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. That is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. And um, Genesis chapter 2, verses 18, it is not good for man to be alone. So make sure that you go and study those scriptures. I'm at 15 minutes. I don't know when my camera is going to cut off. I hope I didn't go through this too fast. I love you guys. This was a really good study for me. So make sure that you go and look up the scriptures. And I will see you guys in my next video. I'm going to do another video for you guys so I can actually read these at that. Because look, I had so many scriptures. I couldn't even read them all. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 29 this is for the women do not let any unwholesome talk come of your mouths but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen so a lot of times women have the um you know they have this thing where in an argument they want to say the thing that hurts you worse and so that is not of a woman of God we are only supposed to speak things to build each other up okay so be that woman who can control her tongue okay that is that is the message for somebody control your tongue I love you guys and I will see you in my next video